Hello YouTube, this is Bowtied Media. Today I've got a brand new React and review for you guys. It is the Loner album by Wisp X. Someone I have never listened to before. I have no idea what they do. I know nothing about them. I don't know anything about this album. But this was requested by the Golden Bowtie member at the time, uh, Mr. Quack22. And so thank you for this request. Uh, also, I do, I, I tell the, I have a stipulation. I say that only 30 minutes... Uh, only 30 minute projects and this album is 46 minutes and so I was just gonna listen to some of the songs not the whole project But because I think this video is really delayed and it's a little came out a lot later than it should have I think uh, I'm gonna listen to the whole thing. Why not? So there you go. Uh, there you go. Mr. Quack 22 uh, We're gonna listen to the entire thing. It's 12 songs uh, and uh, I have I have no idea what to expect um, the artwork feels a little uh, feels very anime ish um that's really all I have to say about it. There's a, a Megalovania remix. There's this other stuff I don't know. It looks very, it looks very little anime. So I'm, I'm interested to see what the style is going to be. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's, uh, we might as well just jump into it. So uh, here's the first track. Uh, this is um, Soulless. It's a minute 36. So my guess is it's more of an intro. This sounds pretty good so far. Really nice orchestral kind of cinematic track. Yeah, I mean, that sounded like nice and serene and it was very calming and I mean, I liked it. Um, and it seems like it's going to be a, yeah, I'll have to see after, but uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was a fun kind of just intro track. I'm interested to see where it's going to go in the rest of the project, considering that was that song. Uh, and uh, for an intro track though, that was that was really nice. Uh, I almost I never give a lot of uh, thought, I should say. That's kind of a bad way to put it, but um, I don't really weigh too heavily the intro style tracks into my overall appeal uh, thought on a project. Um, it's more so just for the uh, kind of background thoughts on uh, the thematics or atmosphere of the project. But uh, that was that was really good. I I actually really enjoyed that. So I'm interested to see where the rest of this is gonna go. So uh, uh, here's track number two. This is uh, fragment. Very empty sound so far. Seems to be kick in here. Well, not quite. DNB? Is that what this is gonna be? Still, a very like chimey, like just the nice light bells sounds.
doesn't feel like there's a ton going on for me personally. And the mix feels a little weird. The mix feels quite off to me. Does it, it feels very flat. Um, the drums feel like they don't have as much uh, impact as they as they could. It feels like it's just a very very linear flat song so far. suffice the whole track list for me that makes sense so yeah um yeah i'm just gonna echo what i said in the middle of the song i i think it just felt like a very flat linear style track uh the yeah the drums for a dnb style track weren't really heavy at all it was a very liquid style dnb uh with uh the kind of um oh i had a word before i was camera uh very like artistic -y, uh, oh, what's the, I had a word, I was thinking right before the song ended, I was like, oh, I have a perfect word to describe this, but it, I can't remember what it is. It's not like, it, it, it teeters on the line of it being like, it feels like an anime D&B style track, if that makes sense. Uh, it's more, uh, artistically worldly. I don't know if that makes sense. It feels like, I feel like I'm looking at like a, um, like a, maybe like a, oh, let's see. I feel like I'm playing Journey with this song if that makes sense that's that's a really old or like not not too old but like a like a just a beautiful game but uh yeah that, my description is gonna be really weird here but i i didn't i didn't really enjoy it i felt it was um too linear too flat for me and uh just i wasn't a ton going on and so uh fragment was uh it was just yeah it wasn't that it wasn't quite there so uh, but we'll see what we think of the next song uh here is Krista. See, this already packs way more of a punch than Fragment did. Even though it's still not there, it's still very, very flat. And like, these are, my headphones are set to be like semi bass boosted, so I should really be able to feel those hits and do not feel those hits. This feels like just the last song. Feels like a VIP to the to fragment, if anything.
But this already has so much more life in it than Fragmented. songs had to have, like a almost hardcore, happy hardcore finale. Uh, that was Krista, uh, just a better version of Fragment, I think, without a doubt. My my thoughts on Fragment actually go down more than I heard that song, considering that um, we we got a better version of that in that track, so I don't understand the purpose of Fragment existing when Krista is a thing. Um, yeah, uh, it sounded a lot better. There's a lot more energy to it. I was a lot more engaged in the track. The whole thing felt like it moved a lot smoother and had better movements of the track. Uh, and it just felt like a more polished version of, uh, of Fragment. I will say, uh, so far, both still are very flat. It's not a style I enjoy. Um, I'm starting to notice a trend, though. And so this is me just speaking uh, broadly. Uh, it seems like uh, I don't know. So I'm going to loop. This could be dangerous. I'm going to loop like... Uh, like the Asian style music and like this anime style stuff together. I think there's lots of overlap and that's not the worst thing in the world to say, but I'm going to loop them together and say that that style, those kind of genres of music or things that revolve around those ideas um, are, uh, they feel like they always have a, like a flattened to them. They don't feel like they have as much of a deeper kick or as a higher high um, than kind of more Western music. I, if that makes sense, I, I hope that is something that makes sense to you. Uh, and I just noticed that with the, uh, the, what the bunny, uh, album that I listened to earlier, there was the, was it, um, uh, well, this album, there's another one I was listening to recently. I can't remember what it was, but regardless, all, all of the kind of more Eastern style music that I've been listening to as of, as of so far. And I would say this sounds more Eastern to me. Um, I may be very wrong there, but it just, that kind of gives me the vibe of like, uh, yeah, just give me like an anime or like a nice, like oil painting kind of, I don't know. It's hard to describe. Um, I'm not, I'm not the greatest with words. So why, why am I even doing these videos? That's the thing, but regardless, um, they, they just feel very flat. And so it's just not my preferred style, but, um, I get that people can enjoy that, but, uh, here we go. Track number four. This is, uh, Faith spelled incorrectly. Oh, I didn't actually hit it there. There we go. Nope. There we go. That'll be fun for me to try to line up now. So far, all the songs follow a very similar structure.
grittier. Got that baseline sustain in there more. This is the second most popular song on the album. Played a lot more with the keys this time around. This sounds very similar to Krista to me, as of now. I like this section a lot though. I can feel the like video game and like anime inspirations from this track specifically. Okay, so I'm not hearing a lot that I really love. Uh, that track was also like good, but there wasn't anything that I was like, this is great. This is what I really love. And it just sounded so much like the, all the tracks you've heard so far. Like the first three just sounded so similar. It's the same atmospheric style of DNB that uh, there really wasn't a whole lot difference whole lot of difference between the three tracks. And for me, that's a bit of a turnoff in terms of uh, listening from because why would I listen to the whole project when I can just listen to one song and uh, it's, it's it's right there? But uh, yeah, that's just my own little bit on it. Uh, so far, I'm I'm unimpressed. Unimpressed with the project, even though the songs are are good. I'm unimpressed overall. So, uh, but here we go. Uh, here is the fifth track and the most popular track with almost a uh, half a million plays on Spotify. Here is uh, Lumina with. Uh, Zomo? Zomo? Here we go. Again, he's got that deeper sustain, just like Krista had. This is a little different than the other ones. Is this halftime? I don't know my I don't know my DNB very well. I may have just 
completely exposed myself. I think it was just half time. Or I was right. Who knows? It feels like there's more space in between the hits than the last three songs did, for sure. So maybe they were just faster. Again, though, I'm hearing a lot of the same stuff. Same song, same sound, same chimes, same beats. I mean, this, this beat's a little different, but... This one does have a little bit more of a kick to it than the other ones do as well. Not as flat as the other ones I've complained about. Uh, that was Lumina. Uh, so, here's what I'm going to say about this album so far. Uh, if we're not including the first track, because it felt like more of an intro, uh, it feels like the song is, the, it's one song that's getting more refined over time with the four tracks. Uh, because it's gotten shorter, it went shorter by 13 seconds, and then another uh, 12 seconds, and then another another 12 seconds, and then another 6 seconds, or next 6 seconds, but it feels like it's getting shorter, it's getting more refined, it's getting more to the punch, or more to the what it actually wants to do is getting quicker it's hitting harder a little bit more and not feeling as flat it's getting a little more dynamic um so my my thought is then why do the first three songs exist um when that lumina is just a better version of all three of those songs like i just i i don't get it personally um i uh i am of the school of thought uh that uh not the school of thought let's put it the other way um this isn't. Uh, this is so niche to me. To, to myself, this feels like a very, very niche project. Uh, in considering it's got this very, 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 very same atmospheric DNB style of track all throughout the project. So, to me, these songs don't sound overly different. They're, that's from each song, one another. They don't seem overly different, and so I'm not like appreciating the difference between one track to another or recognizing a lot of grander differences when they all feel so, so similar to me. And so that's a big turnoff for me about why I wouldn't like this project as much because it's just, it's, I just feel like I'm listening to the same thing over and over again. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna say for now. Uh, let's get into Loner, the title track and uh, see what, uh, how this song goes. Uh, this also isn't a very popular song for being the title track. So uh, I don't know, here we go. Here's uh, Loner. <laughs> songs have that deeper disdain, have them don't. Percussion gonna slowly build in here. I 
Oh. Okay. We're getting a little different. Okay, our first like actually different style track. Okay, those triplet hits aren't really doing it for me. They feel really unnatural. It doesn't feel like they flow into the song, but and that whole kick sound just felt a little off for me. I'm I'm getting a little tired of the really high bell noise now. something different. Yeah, that just doesn't... doesn't sound great to me. So, I mean, we got something different with that track, which is uh, nice to hear. It's more of like a Electro House kind of style song, I would say, more so than... It definitely wasn't D&B. Um, it, it, if I had to give it anything, I think it's Electro House in broad, broader scopes, broader terms. Um, yeah. Also, sorry for those of you who hear a little sniffle every now and then. I got a little, my little puppy down here, and uh, he keeps wanting to lick himself. So, stop it. Stop it. Um... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that track was, uh, uh it, again, it isn't really doing it for me. Um, it doesn't seem like anything it is, like, far from a standout track for me personally. I don't feel like it's really something that's enticing me or really drawing me into the song. Um, I, that, those high just bell melody lines are just, uh, or, like, chimatic melody lines are just, they're just, there's, it's, they're a little annoying now. It's just... It's a little too much for me, and I get that that's, I guess, at this point, Wisp X's similar, or not similar, signature style, or signature sound, but, uh, yeah, it's, I'm getting a little, I'm getting quite tired of that, uh, that high keys synth sound, so, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I have to say about that so far, so I'm, I'm happy it's something different, it's not just that same D&B track, so, uh, here we go, here is, uh, track number seven, uh, Saifa. So formulaic at this point, though. I keep saying it at the beginning of every song because I'm literally. Okay. A little more airy on this DNB one, as of right now.
it just sounds a lot. It's like the other D and B style tracks now. A little, a little bit of a darker turn, just because the those constant hits are the. Duh, duh, duh. That's like your... Yeah. Yeah, another track I'm just kind of bored of at this point. That really just seems like the same DMB style track that was not for me. I, uh, so sometimes when people tell me uh, that when I listen to stuff that all these songs kind of sound the same, um, I feel like this is the album that like epitomizes the this song sounds the same the entire time. Uh, maybe that's just because I'm this outsider perspective on this genre and artist, uh, but like, damn, I, I really can barely tell the difference between this stuff and just some other stuff from the same project. Like, like I, I could not, I could not, if, if you went back now and gave me a snippet of one of the songs, I could not tell you which one was which. I just couldn't. I, they literally all sound so similar to me. Same structure, same synth sound, same bass line, same beat. It's just like, it feels a little obsessive at this point, I would say. So I'm I'm just hoping for some more stuff that's a little, little more, a little more something else. So here we go. Here is a uh, Atma. Five minute track. 454, so this will be interesting. I'm just afraid this is gonna be like a, just a bigger D&B song. Which I don't think it is at this point. I'm intrigued where this is going so far. Okay, it's different. Okay, this is definitely a little different. I'll give it that. It's more like happy hardcore at this point, actually. Doesn't feel like the drop though, so I can hear that percussion. Ooh. I actually like those vocals a lot. 
when they're lower. Huh. Is this halftime? This is halftime. This is halftime, right? This has got to be halftime. This one does feel like more fleshed out, more... There's just more going on. It's more cinematic -y, I want to say. I use that descriptor a lot. I gotta get away from that, but... vocals the whole point, but when they're lower, I really like it a lot more. We're not that high piercing sound. Like a weird change or weird transition in the movement, but... I think all of these songs could have greatly benefited from from, that, from some lyrics, from some voices. Just give me some, yeah, yeah. And I know it's hard. I know it's hard to get uh, lyrical performances sometimes, but I think greatly could have benefited from that. Uh, okay, Atma uh, feels. Like, that one was a little more grandioso. Like, I felt like it had more of a... Uh, it knew what it kind of wanted to do. It was more... Rather than just kind of being a DNB song just to be like a DNB song, I felt like it had more reason to exist, if that makes sense. I felt like it was a little more uh, polished narratively and kind of having more movements to the track that felt like it was taking you more so on a journey rather than it's just being like a, uh, just a song to listen to. Uh, I hope that makes sense. But uh, yeah, so that one that one wasn't bad. I uh, again, all these aren't really that bad. Like I, I think they're all like um, I'm scoring them on the sides. I'm giving them lots of like sixes right now, lots of six and fives, which are like that's a just a math for me. Um, but uh, there's not really like nothing's like they're not bad songs. Uh, they're just not my preferred style. I think they could be a little more dynamic. Um, but uh, like they're definitely they're not fantastic and they're not bad. So um, it'll be interesting to see where I rate this in the end because this is a reacting rate so i think uh i think i know where it's where i'm gonna put it at the end um right now but we'll see if uh, these songs change my opinion we got four more songs uh here is track nine save and quit this is an interlude minute 48 it's like a lullaby menu screen music, like as you're saving and quitting, you hear this.
I'm liking these shorter songs more than the regular songs. It's a weird sound. There was a weird sound in the middle there. It was like someone was like jingling like a chain. Or like the metal part on a bag or something. This is a funky kind of almost creepy atmosphere to it. Okay, uh, save and quit. Um, I, I don't think there's much more to say about that that I didn't in the middle of the track. Um, I am enjoying the those kind of the tonality feels nice and it feels like it's more cohesive with like that and soulless than the rest of the tracks did. They feel like it's more. It feels more like a there's something happening. There's a story to be told in this and soulless than honestly the rest of the songs. Uh, Atma was a uh, was a little bit of an exception, but other than the songs, other than that one, but um, yeah, we're gonna move on. Here is uh, track 10, Black Divinity. Another four minutes and 54 seconds song. Okay. Is this gonna be a world's inspired song? I, I, yeah. Sounds so much like Worlds, like Porter Robinson's Worlds album right now. It sounds like Fellow Feeling, like quite a bit, especially with that little glitch at the beginning. This is offering something that I'm, I'm liking. It's a little different. Actually, it's a lot of different. It's the most different than anything else we've heard. Which <laughs> isn't that different. I mean, it's an L. You get that. Fun little like wet noise. I'm interested to see if we can go back to that glitchiness. Be a true fellow feeling. I mean, not quite, didn't go full fellow feeling.
Okay. I'm, I'm impressed with this one. So far, more than anything. Okay, Black Divinity. Um, it really, I really could tell uh, the the inspirations from uh, Porter Robinson's fellow feeling were quite palpable in that track. So um, I liked it. I, I really did. I'm I'm sad that that's the least popular track on Spotify. <laughs> that is uh, <laughs> the least amount of plays, and that's was my favorite of the album so far. Um, and that's I've been doing that lately with some songs. I don't know what it is about me so far this year specifically that I'm liking the really odd more out of place track so um hmm i wonder if that uh that'll continue it was what it was uh it was bridge on overworks vessel it was damon's on uh automate automate uh what 24 on starseed no no i don't think that one was as much there's another one i can't remember what it was um but yeah for some reason hmm uh Fun song. Uh, again, that was one that I think had a little more. I was. In, I'm gonna recycle a little bit what I said from Save and Quit, uh, where Save and Quit felt like it had more uh, narrative storytelling to be told or a story to actually be told. That one feels like it actually had something to be told. It, there was something going on there that was a little more uh, made me think a little bit more, which is why I was silent for the back half of that uh, track because I was really trying to figure out what it was telling me, what it was trying to say, and so. Um, yeah, big ups for uh, Black Divinity. Uh, so let's see if it continues with our last two tracks. Uh, we've got Eternal Layer, a 7 minute 37 second song. So here we go. In for a ride here. Might lean back a little bit more on this one. My back's hurt. Again, though, those just key, that key sound or whatever the, the effects are on that key to give it that kind of high punchy sound. Um, it's just used so much. And it's very, very Eastern. Is that the best way to put it? Like, it just sounds like anime inspired. It sounds like more, I picture like a Japanese cherry blossom when I hear it. And like, does that make sense? mixed great, but at least it's fun. I mean, for a long song, it's keeping me engaged right now.
like punchy laser noise there. Wow, wow. That was an odd transition. A little rough there, but... I'm not feeling this section as much, that's for sure. I think it could be a realization. I'll see if there's a slurp right here. I'll say it. It's a long thought. Here's my thought real quick. I think my issue that I'm having with the mixing, um... Oh, the key change! That was not nice. I think the mixing, like a poor mix, sounds a lot worse with DNB than it does with like any other style of music. Because I think that first half of the song, it's very similarly mixed, but it doesn't sound as bad in the first half when it's a little more chaotic than DNB. It's more noticeable in DNB, I think, for me, when it's such a flat mix. I was not a fan of that key change, though. That, like, stung a little. It felt like a wrong note. And I know it's hard to do key changes like that. But my whole energy for the song is kind of just dead now. Okay, we're going for the finale here. Percussion's coming in, so we're going D&B again. Oh, nope. Happy Hardcore. Yeah, that song lost all its momentum after that first drop of three. Yeah, it showed a lot of promise, but in the end it did, uh, <laughs> did not, did not show up. Okay, uh, so I think that song uh, tried to be the magnum opus song, the magnum opus of the project, where it was a bit of everything. It did a little bit of every style of track. It sounded, the first part sounded a lot like Black Divinity, the middle part was the DNB that sounded a lot like the beginning parts, and then there's Happy Hardcore, which was mixed all kind of throughout here and there. Uh, it felt like it was like, that felt like a finale song. 
that felt like a finale to me. That felt like a, this is everything. We're throwing everything at the wall. We're just kind of going at her and bam, bam, bam. Here's every genre. Um, that just, yeah, did not work for me. Uh, it had me, I liked it in the first half because I think that's, I liked that Black Divinity style more so. But um, in the end, I was like, nah, nah. Yeah, and I'm gonna echo what I said there before. I think the, I think the difference in mixing I feel a lot more with the uh, drum and bass, and I think the hardcore style too. It I notice it a lot more. It, it feels a lot weaker, and it feels a lot like a, a poorly mixed track with those genres. I think more so than any other. So, here we go. Final track, Azur Rose. Uh, here we go. I wonder if this is gonna be. Uh, a outro of sorts because that last song felt like a finale style song so here we go if it does like a regular song if that makes sense like if it's like a dnb track i'll be upset so i think it needs to close it out a little differently Maybe this isn't like a song song, a single style song, if that makes sense. I'm happy that this is more um, outro-like, is that the best way to put it? Our final track, Zuru Rose. I am happy uh, it did that. It did that as a finale, so I'll, I'll give it that. Um, but I don't think much more to say individually on the song. Uh, it was nice, but it definitely wasn't as nice soundly as as nice soundly as Soulless was. Um, okay, final thoughts. My rate slash part of the rate and react. Um, I thought the album uh, was was okay. I thought it was just okay. Uh, I significantly liked the non DNB hardcore style songs or sections of the album. I thought anything that was DNB or hardcore was a bit of a turnoff for me, and the uh, odd mix choicing was felt like it was just it didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me. Any section that wasn't liter that literally wasn't DNB or hardcore, I enjoyed. Whether it was the weird kind of electro house fusions, I don't know what to call it in some areas or the more orchestral cinematic sounding intros and outros and soulless and Azura Rose. 
I really liked those kind of things, and save and quit even. So the highlights for me were everything but the main style of <laughs> production from this album, from Wis Wisp X. And so that's a bit of a, a turnoff for me, and, I, and I, that's not, or not turnoff, that's a bit of a, uh, that's a bit of sad, I think, because that's not, I think, what you're trying to produce here. I like the stuff that was everything but the main style, and so... Yeah, to me it just wasn't it. The mixing felt off, the songs were repetitive, and felt like I was hearing the same song over and over and over and over again. And uh, I think this the album did kick up steam uh, towards the end. It got better and better and better as it went on. But uh, in the end, it just wasn't enough to salvage a really phenomenal album, I'd say. So, uh, yeah. In the end, Wisp X Loner album is going to score a 5. But well, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Bowtie Media. Let me do what you guys think in the comments section below. Uh, I've been Bowtie Media, and uh, Mr. Quack22 was the one that suggested this. So thank you. Thank you for suggesting this. Uh, it was a fun listen through, even though I didn't uh, love the heck out of it. But that's all good. I'm not going to get that every time. So I've been Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.